All right, let's see if let's see if Fatima likes my snow owl. Debbie, look at my drawing on here. Hootie hoo! What? Ugly. Hootie hoo. It's a snow owl. You know what a snow owl is? No. Hootie hoo. It's ugly. Look, oh, you, it's almost gone now. Because you just put that pencil in there. I'm going to get a marker. I'm going to paint it. I got to do a painting. Hootie hoo. Is that more funny or, or do you like the meow? Meow. Yeah. She said she didn't care. What do you got here, baby? I'm gonna put that on the barbecue tonight, my friends. If I do my chopping it up, chopping it up, chopping it up. She just went shopping. When she was supposed to come back with a bunch of stuff. She came back with nothing, baby. What's going on? I used to But I do see some unauthorized purchases in here. You, 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 brought, you brought back chicken with the bones in it. Me? I requested boneless chicken. They have boneless in there also. I give you boneless with the bones. That's mine. I'm not telling you that's yours. Hey, it's mine. You can't eat the bones. I don't want to pay extra weight for the bones. Boneless. We're buying it by the weight. So if you buy bones and fat, man, unauthorized. I said, baby, that's too much food for us. And she said, this is mine, that's yours, because I want the bones. Baby, why are you like gnawing on them bones, baby? This girl loves chewing on the bones. After she gets done with a, with a, with a chicken bone, the dogs outside are crying, because there ain't nothing left on it. There's not even a, a morsel or a snack for them dogs. What you putting on there, honey? Calamansi. Little calamansi? Yeah. Baby, you look so beautiful today. So I'm going to try and move going there. You're still beautiful, baby. My goodness. Baby, is all that oyster sauce? Hmm? Okay, she went with the Mamacita's oyster sauce. I'm a big fan of oyster sauce, but you may have hit it too heavy on that oyster sauce, baby. I put that also on. The okay. You're going to put also, I know? The barbecue marinade. Okay. All right. Well, I just think you went too heavy on the, on the oyster sauce. So we'll try it. We'll try it. All right, folks. Got Rudy on the scene today. And what's the flavors for the day, baby? Ubi. I know flavor to you Ubi. Ubi, cheese, and mango. We got ubi, fish, and mango. Cheese. Huh? Cheese. Oh, ubi. We got ubi, cheese, and mango for today's flavors. Folks, let me come down here and show you. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Look at that, folks. My goodness. All you do is take two Yeti cups. Go like that. It'll keep that ice cream cold as a cucumber. I'm, I'm a, such a genius. Look at that. Now she won't be able to find it. She'll be like, where, where is it? <laughs> I, I, she found that ice cream right away. And I said, baby, how'd you know it was over there? And she said, I could smell it. I said, you could smell ice cream in two Yeti cups? My goodness, baby, you're like a bloodhound when it comes to ice cream. Jorge, this is a good idea we use in here for you. <laughs> yeah. We eat all ice, everyday ice cream for us. And the beach, we cut up. <laughs> we got Rudy's coming curbside every day. Mm, good job. Good job, son. All right, folks, coming through the market area on a Saturday afternoon. See what's shaking. I'm gonna go take me a little walk over on the beach, get a little exercise. It is hot. 
beautiful sunny day but hey there's no time like the present gotta figure out the most efficient way to uh my goodness i gotta figure out the most efficient way to cut over to the beach from here never really thought about it cut through one of these hotels i reckon Found me a nice little alley. A lot of beautiful ladies out on a Saturday afternoon. I guess they're doing a little shopping. Getting ready for Saturday night. And I ain't got nobody. I got some money because I just got paid. Nice cool breeze coming through. Even though it's warm, got the nice cool breeze saving us. Bredo Mini Mart onto the right side of the aircraft. Approaching the coffee shop. Now folks, I'm not shooting with my, I'm shooting 4K60, iPhone 12 mini. And I'm not gonna plug in my lapel mic until I get to the beach. I think it's gonna be windy over there. I'm just testing out the regular microphone just on the regular microphone of the iPhone 12 mini and as I step up to the plate National Highway at Rizal Street just to take a look around and survey my surroundings give you a slow pan around see what we got going on today Folks, again, if you haven't seen any previous videos, it's cool to come out here to the coffee shop to these two little places right there and get some coffee, eat outside, sit there and watch the traffic go by. I didn't plan on walking down Barreto. That wasn't my objective. My objective is to go for a walk on the beach. Look at these hogs coming through. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, just three. I thought there were four. That dude was bringing up the rear on that click. Shout out to them Harley Harley riders. I'd love to have a Harley. I just don't want to pay for it. My goodness. But you know what? The thing about Harleys are like apples. They hold their value. So if you buy a used Harley for like eight grand, you can ride the damn thing for three years and sell it for eight grand, and it's like you had a free Harley. So it's sort of like an apple. You pay a lot for it, but you know what? You can sell the damn thing and recoup a lot of your money. Got a brand new uh, patient's transport service coming through there. Now that dude can't see shit out of that motorbike because I can't see him. But he finna pull out into traffic. He, I mean, check him out. He can't, he can't see a damn thing and he's pulling out into traffic. It's just rolling the dice. I don't know. Oh, they got somebody down below. All right, so I think I'm just going to cross the street over here. But I'm not going for a walk all the way down Barrio Barreto. I'm going to the beach because that's what I said I was going to do. All right, see if I can cross the street without getting run over. Oh, got my blue suede shoes into action. Arizona I think I think the easiest way without having to uh... hello my friend how are you I think the easiest way without having to sign in or take a temperature is just to come down here and see if these good folks will let me cut through here I'm sure they will but I'm just trying to get out to the beach and then walk uh, northbound No gate over here. It's coming this way. It's gonna cut through. It says closed. Maybe if I go down to the end, I don't know. Hello, my friend. Can I cut through to the beach? What's that? Can I cut through here or no? It's closed. Uh, it's closed. What about down there? It's what okay. You I just want to get to the beach so I can walk north. No. Voila. Okay friendly chap 
Jason's being a little sarcastic. But whatever, it's not his job to cater to the foreign dude. But you know what? It's not close. Because there's there are people. Let me show you. Right there. One, two, three, four Kuyas hanging out. And the gentleman that I just spoke to went through there. There's a dude with a bullhorn. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people over there. So, whatever, dude. All you had to do is let me through that fucking gate where I can hit the beach. I hope you have a great, wonderful afternoon, because I sure the hell am. And what's funny is when I figure out a way to cut through here, I'm going to come back by and stink up your place over there for a few minutes. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Why life's closed. Motherfucker. Folks, in any country, in any society, anywhere you're at in the world, <laughs> you run into friendly people. Mediocre people, less than friendly people, helpful people, less than helpful people. So for anybody to tell you, oh, the Filipino people are the most friendly in the world. Well, that's a generalization and that's stereotyping people. And uh, really, that's not fair. You come over here, yeah, for the most part, people are friendly, but occasionally you're going to run into people who... Uh, aren't happy with their life that's just the way it is all right i talked about that enough right but you got to understand i guess the point maybe there's a point to this but when you go somewhere on vacation for a week and then you go home your perception of that country is very limited it's very, very limited because you just went there on vacation for a week with a pocket full of money. When you live somewhere, there's different experiences. You're not going to have wonderful days like you did when you went, you know, five days in the Bahamas or you spent six days on Walking Street and we're spending 500 bucks a night or whatever you were spending. When you come to live, in a place and not be just a tourist things are different there's going to be days that uh, try your patience and aren't aren't uh, exactly perfect that's life that dude back there ain't affecting my mood at all but I'm just trying to give you a different perspective other than people just saying, oh, move to the Philippines. It's so wonderful. When you live here, it's everyday life. I'm still heading down here. Hello, my friends. Hello. Hello got the vulcanizing shop and if you're not familiar with that it's basically a tire it's a tire shop they fix flat tires right so a gentleman over there's got a flat tire so he's coming in there and i could probably spend an entire day at a vulcanizing shop and you would be mesmerized by how they fix the tires hello sir how are you hello i, I wrote a blog post about the vulcanizing shop years ago I was down on the island in Cebu had a flat tire on the motorbike this old man fixed it I mean you know for pennies on the dollar but when he pulled that thing off of there this old man fixed the, the tire on a motorbike and when he pulled that inner tube out of there that son of a bitch had about 17 holes in it previous patches you know, in America, that thing, you know, things are different in the West, but there ain't no way in hell that that, it, I mean, it wasn't safe in any country that you're in, really. Let's get it out there, but it had about 17 patches on it. He patched the hole, sent us on a merry way, and then the next
next day, it was flat as a pancake again. All right, now here's maybe going too far. Might be too far trying to cut down one of these alleys. Anyhow, vulcanizing shops, internet, interesting place. How they fix those those flat tires here. But folks, you got to understand, if you get a flat, they're not going to put a new tube in there. Or at least nobody here is going to buy a new tube. That thing is going to get patched for years and years and years before it finally gives up the ghost. And um, they have to buy a new one. Now, I have, think I have come too far, but I don't know. You know, exploring and adventures are about going places where you don't know exactly but this is basically a shit river here and I don't want to go on that side of the river and then have to walk my ass across the shit river down there. So I may have to add, uh, admit temporary defeat and head my ass back in this direction so I can uh, find me a little alley to cut down. Don't matter. I'm gonna ask these folks, hey, can I, can I get to the beach from here? I don't think I can because when we walked here before, I think they have like a fence over there. They obviously gotta have some type of security because they got all these trucks in there and they don't want to cool you sneaking in, doing any type of thievery. Hello, hello. <laughs> Everybody sees this camera and they kind of grin. But it's pink case. That's the desired effect. Put a smile on somebody's face with my with my snow owl. Just look at the snow owl and talk to the camera. Alright, if anybody's looking for a place, let me give a plug out. Okay, right here by the Petron station, okay. Now I'm just paying back here. Looks like they're building a new Petron station. And obviously there's Savers and Our Lady of Lures. And folks, that Savers where I bought all of our, uh, our air con and our refrigerator. Got a fair price and they delivered that stuff immediately. Shout out to them. So if you're looking for any type of appliance, stop in there and check them out. You got everything from mattresses, TVs. Okay, there's some con, uh, not condos, townhouses right here. Now, my former landlord, her name's, uh, uh, Teresa. Miss Teresa's got a couple units in here. I don't know if that's her number or not. But these townhouses are pretty good size. Uh, like your average place. Uh, they, these are, these have got a lot of extra room. So if you're the type of dude, you need extra square footage. You might want to check out these townhouses. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that's Teresa's number on the sign or not. People all the time ask me about places to stay. If you need a lot of room, that's one of the places you can check out. Whoa, Pepsi Man took him wide on the outside. Swerving, like swerving Ernie Irvin behind the wheel of that, that vehicle. My goodness, great driving. You got some good driving skills. back to the vulcanizing shop. I was headed to the beach. Ended up on the south side of Barrio Barreto. But I guess you guys probably want to see the Barreto anyhow. Probably more interesting than me walking on the beach, looking at the water and reflecting on life's mysteries. All right, got a little medical clinic. Monday, Thursday, Friday, 10 to 5, if you're looking for a small clinic. And you might say, I wouldn't go there, but here's the thing. It's like a, you know, probably like a family practitioner, stuff like that. But say you need a uh, physical to get a driver's license or something like that that's exactly the place you would go see the doctor do a quick you know quick exam and give you the paperwork needed to get a, uh, a 
driver's license. Now, if I'm having a heart attack, I obviously go to Our Lady of Lures. But if you just needed a quick, quick physical or document, that's the gentleman I would go see. All right, so I'm back to the. I don't know what they call this. I think I'm gonna rename it the Wallacano Beach. Right here, you have some nice shade to walk under. In front of the Wallacano Beach and Resort. There's two trike loads of folks coming out of there. Looks like, uh, it's like trike load of the brown guy, folks. Trike load of brown guy, folks coming out. Got some watermelons for sale here. All right, got some cycling, cycling going down. Okay. So pass that up. That's a popo back there. Not sure what they what they're up to, but I'll just keep pushing northbound. Yeah, could have cut through to Arizona there. I probably would have had to get a temperature check. This gentleman right here to the left, he's always around. A local personality here in Barreto. All right, let's start looking for alleys to cut down. Oh yeah, right here, this is a sports bar. That's right, folks. I've been back here before. Can't remember who brought me back here, but there's a bar back here. Right there, the dive in sports bar. Folks, oh, sometimes when you get to drinking and you go new places with people, you can't remember a whole lot. But I'm pretty sure I've been in there before. Maybe I've done a video. Hell I don't I don't know. But I'm not here going to the bar. I'm just looking for an alleyway to cut down. And I found my horse. Oh shit, I could tick, 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 tick that home. Love to, we upcycle, recycle, reuse those things. Oh yeah. Look at that beautiful tree. Look at those coconuts. Got vid jokey. Got vid jokey going down. I tell you, life is good. Oh yeah. Remember, this is Saturday, folks. This ain't during the week. This is the weekend. And on the weekend, hello. Oh, yeah. Check out the view here. On the weekends here in Barreto, folks, Subic Bay, there's a lot of tourists coming up from Manila, coming over from Ancales, Pampanga, Makati. Beautiful day. Look, I don't know if this iPhone, I'm sure it'll do some justice, but over there with that sun beating down on those mountains, and folks, I wish I was on the other side of those mountains at Silong In Cove. This boat's called the Blue Ocean. It's a pretty good sized vessel. And you know what? I'm gonna walk back up that way to the Wallacano Beach. That gentleman's got dirty ice cream. Oh yeah. Little, it's a little windy out here on the beach. It's the Arizona right here. Beautiful property from the beach side looking over there. And folks, so I'm shaking the camera a bit. I'm trying to get the right, the right angle on the dangle with the, uh, with the selfie stick here. Now, I'm not down with a gimbal. I ain't got no time for a gimbal, and I don't really know how to use a damn thing either. Just like my buddy Eric said, he bought a gimbal and just never used it. But if you take your uh, tripod or selfie stick 
and kind of put it out there even when you're filming this direction it sort of gives a little bit of extra stability instead of holding the phone handheld so we got a bunch of boats here I'll just give you a slow pan around wow that boat is beautiful with the flags and the uh, flowers a lot of character on that bustle right there okay but I'm gonna purposely come over here and put my put my blue suede shoes on Wallacano Beach and see what it looks like and I'll just walk my ass all the way down here to the pier take a piss just to prove the fact that I can <laughs> I know sometimes I'm an asshole now, folks right here this water's pretty pretty clear All right, now here's where things get a little tricky, right? When you're shooting on the main camera of the iPhone, which you want to shoot on the main camera, has a different aperture than the uh, FaceTime. I don't know what they call it these days. Oh, damn, about to bust my ass. But you can't see the screen, so you got to kind of judge it. And since this camera is new to me, if I'm out of frame or I've got it all jacked up or whatever, you just got to deal with it till I get used to what kind of angle I need for this guy what you know the the angle on the dangle the right height and all that stuff probably by the end of the day I'll have it dialed in but right now it may not be dialed in got this lapel mic going on like I said it's windy so you want a lapel mic and plus you know if you start shooting the camera in other directions you can still hear my audio no matter which way the microphones are facing okay now the party is right here there, there's so many beautiful ladies right in here my goodness They're trying to distract me from my from my work here my goodness hello hello everybody having a good time here on the beach but what would you rather me do stop and hang out with all these beautiful ladies or give you a walking tour of the beach. <laughs> I know it's a rough life. Somebody got to do it. Somebody's got to do it, my friends. So this is where the party is. party's at on the weekends. All right, headed for it. couple dogs here speaking of dogs you know a lot of times when you're doing these walking tours there's, there's not really anything to talk about no thank you my brother no thank you my friend when there's not a lot to uh, talk about you can just come up with other other topics right so I'll talk about dogs in a minute specifically street dogs Let's come over here and see what they got going on. Yeah, I got, I got the shells. Yeah, the shells and the sea cucumber. Hello, everyone. How are you? Oh, we got a sea cucumber? Ah, okay. Yeah, it looks delicious. <laughs> All right. So, pushing on. Fucking mouse probably going to yak at me because I didn't pick her up anything. But I'm a man on a mission. All right, so there you go. Suzuki Beach Hotel. What was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about dogs. About these stray dogs. There is a benefit to these stray dogs, believe it or not. If these dogs congregate outside your house, there are some pros and some cons. Like if they stay on your street, you know, soy dogs hanging out on your street. Okay, there's cons to it because if you try to go home at night, 
the damn dogs that try to bite you on your own street. Number two, they're always crapping in the street. The pros to having these dogs living on your street is that they're free security. Because if you can't go home without there being some barking and snarling and carrying on, well, nobody else can walk down your street. It's like free security. You know, free security that shits in the street. So you just uh, have to decide, you know, what's the what's the better situation. But we got some street dogs in Thailand. We call them soy dogs. That's a good looking dog right there. That that stay right out on our street. And if anybody comes down our street in the middle of the night, they go crazy on them. I got free security. Just try not to step into poop when you leave out. Pretty simple. Coming up on uh, Central Park Reef and the By the Sea. Now this is the property that I wanted to show you guys that I talked about was so beautiful. Got some photo shoots going on off to the left side of the aircraft. Yeah, this, this by the sea property is so spread out. And they've got like a little covered pavilion. They've got a covered pavilion. They've got a swimming pool. Just a really nice property. And see, let's see, that's the pavilion right there, and then the pool is up here. All this is open. She got like, like a lot of open area. The exterior of, of the property is just beautiful. I mean, I'm sure there's a million walking tours in there showing you the rooms, whatever. But I've sat on bar stools staring at the place for many a day and up until about I don't know a couple months ago when me and Eric walked around the property checked it out I'd never never been through there okay Central Park Reef little rock outcrops there There's uh, several of those little things in Subi Bay you got to be aware of if you're trying to be a boat captain. Especially at night. You can't be a boat captain at night around here. You got to know all those little things like that. You're going to screw up your boat. Now, folks, we got some people hanging out at the pool at the Central Park Reef. Now, I'm not going to zoom in on them. Hello, my friend. How are you? Maybe I shouldn't be posting that, but there's some folks at the pool at your Central Park Reef. I have no idea if the property is open or if that's the owners. Whatever y'all doing, none of my business. But I would like to know if, if and when that property is open. Especially the damn rooftop bar so I can come up there and drink a damn beer. All right. He's rocking on in a forward direction, clipping, around, uh, clipping along at about a medium rate of speed. And I'm actually glad that the, at, that the clouds are out because I would be sort of shooting into that sun right there and it would be so backlit. Basically, I just need to walk to the end of the beach and come back the opposite direction. That's a boat for rent gentleman right next to the Central Park Reef. Alright, what's going on over here? Sound like we got some ladies over there. Now this is the uh, little floating complex. Let me get up here so I tell you the name and everything, make sure everything's right. Oh, folks, this is a beach, please. Cool, that place is so cool. 
And there are some beautiful ladies over there. My, that is too cool of a place. When I finish this little tour, I may have to just pop in there and see what's happening. Okay, now this is a uh, off to the right size Mango's Beach Bar. And we've got a lot of patrons up there. So I'm not going to shoot that way. Because some of the patrons are in their uh, Speedos. If you're in your Speedos trying to get a drink at the bar, if I were, I wouldn't want somebody putting the camera in my face either. So I'll just shoot over here. If you want to bring the kids over, I'm not sure what the prices are. But there you go. There's a floating uh, play, play area. I'm not sure what you would call it. And over here is uh, more jet ski rentals and banana boats. All right, folks, ran into a friend of mine. We're coming up here trying to find a beer at the Sorry Sorry store. Get the local price instead of instead of going and sitting on a bar stool. <laughs> uh, folks, my friend Anakin. If you want to uh, have a good time, go to uh, Rosie's Bar and hang out with the girls from Rosie's. Tell them Marco sent you and ask for Annika. And I'm with her friend here, too. She's trying not to get on the video. But she's a beautiful girl. Check her shirt out. Come, baby, come show them your shirt. She got on her shirt that says something about you ain't shit or something like that. Got a little sorry, sorry store here. All right, let's come in here and see if we can get the grandes. Oh, thank you very much, darling. Thank you. Yeah, whatever, whatever these ladies want. But only, I only got 200 pesos, so if we go over 200, I want you to put it on her utang, okay? <laughs> folks, I just went for a walk. And of course, I've been around here a long time, so I know, know a lot of folks. I ran into my friends here from Rosie's. So we are going to have a drink. I'm um, drinking me just an SMB over ice. You ladies aren't drinking beer? No. No? You got to go work later. Okay, well, I'm, I'm telling all my friends out there to come see you over at Rosie's and ask for Annika and buy her a drink, bring them some Jollibee, all that good stuff. Show them the video and tell them that Marco sent you, okay? Promise you, you have a good time over there at Rosie's. One of my favorite little hangouts over there. All right, folks, I'm coming through this little, little alleyway here. And shout out to my new friends at the Little Sorry Sorry store there. Thanks for uh, your kindness and hospitality. But basically where this little alleyway is, if you want to come have a drink at that Sorry Sorry store, it's, oh my goodness, right across from the Harley Aftermarket Parts store. And right next to the Palm Tree Resort. Folks, I said I wasn't gonna do it. But now I'm back in Barreto down the main drag seeing what's happening on Saturday afternoon now I'm gonna be honest with you there ain't nowhere I can go but home and I'm gonna tell you why because I only I only brought uh, 200 pesos with me <laughs> I actually had 300 and I bought about to mind uh, four sheets of my ice cream and so I ain't got no money. I sat there and just had a drink. I mean, I, I only plan on walking up and down the beach. My plans got a little bit sidetracked, meeting up with them two beautiful ladies, but we just had a quick drink. And that's it, I'm out of money. Which is a damn good thing, because if I had a pocket full of money, I'd be pulling my ass in this thumb star off to the right side of the aircraft, and I'd be up in there all night. So it's a good thing that, uh, good thing that I'm out of funds because I'm rolling back to the house and even though it's a Saturday night I just want to spend Saturday night with uh, little 4th G barbecue I got plenty of beer got plenty of cigars shout out to my buddy Duke Shooter so all I'm going to do is just go back and get me a cold beer 
fire up a cigar and fire up that barbecue. Now there is one slight problem. There is one slight problem. And that problem is I was supposed to buy charcoal with that 200 pesos that I had and now I spent it so I gotta go home. I gotta go home and get some more money. And go back out and get the ooling. The ooling, the candy. I get them two terms mixed up. Ooling means charcoal and candy means goat. Folks, could it be? Could it be that this hotel is open? And I'm so curious, I'm gonna come up here and ask them if the place is open. Hey, is the hotel open now? Yes, sir. Now, folks, this is exciting news. The Central Park Reef Hotel is open. Uh, what did he say? April? Shit, I, don't, I can't remember. He said the 17th. Hell, it ain't the 17th yet. But anyhow, Central Park Reef Hotel is open. That is, that is a great sign. My goodness. I should have asked them if the uh, rooftop bar was open. Probably no, but Central Park Reef, according to that gentleman, is open. It appears that there are customers there, guests. That is a good sign here in Barrio Barreto. Coming over, looking up at Barcelona, calling my name, but I just can't make it. If I get up in there, got nothing to do but ooh time. But... I'm a man on a mission. I'm going home. I'm spending my Saturday night. Saturday night with my family. It's not a bar night. There we go. Everybody sitting at home watching on that 65 inch big screen. This is what everybody is dreaming of once they open up that airport right here. This is the center of gravity, Mario Barreto. Barcelona, the green room, voodoo. You got the wet spot, you got hot zone, cheap Charlie's. We got bottoms up. Folks, you'll be here soon enough. Before you know it, they're gonna open up this airport, get your ass on a plane and sit on that bar stool up there at Cheap Charlie's. Hello. But for now, but for now, I will represent everybody. I will represent everybody here. Man, goodness, beautiful ladies over at the hot zone. Got bottoms up. Crazy horse. Pandemonium up in here. A beautiful, beautiful concrete block facade. And again, over to the left side is the It Doesn't Matter bar. A lot of traffic here going northbound into Zambales province. You can tell that it's a Saturday afternoon. A lot of, a lot of canoes, a lot of foreign guys out on the streets. Beautiful sunshine beating down. Should be real good. Should be real good lighting, folks. That sun beating down, popping them colors off of that TV right there. My goodness. Man, we got sham bullies off to the right side of the aircraft with roast and and dokes. back to where I started from. I'm back here at the coffee shop in the rooftop hotel. Just ain't got enough money to buy that charcoal. Maybe I do. I think I got maybe 40 pesos. That might be enough. But the worst thing you can do is start a barbecue and then run out of charcoal. That is just not cool. And the thing about it is, is I'm a, 
you know, I'm barbecuing on that small grill. And them small grills with those small bags of charcoal, they can run out real quick. You find yourself in a barbecue quagmire. Always want to make sure you roll heavy on the on the uli and the candy. Look at that swan. Swan with a pig. Folks, I lucked out. She had uli for 13 pesos each. Good price. I happen to have 70 pesos left. And now I am in business for my barbecue. Oh yeah, life is good. Funny how things work out to my advantage. I like to take lemons and make lemonade. It all went good. I took just enough money to buy a drink with two beautiful ladies, pick up my charcoal and get back home without getting myself into any trouble tonight. Now, the night is still young. The night is still young, that could be a problem. But I don't plan on going out. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that joy charcoal stove. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. First thing I'm gonna put on there is that big hunk of meat that this woman bought. Oh my God, I don't know. I may have to. What did you say? Huh? Have I ever burnt the meat, baby? No, I ain't never. You like black. Oh, I like, yeah, I do like black. I like black women. I like dark skinned Filipinas. Just burn your. But, honey, I have never burnt a piece of meat in my life. You can go back over all my previous videos. I've never burnt anything. Yeah. I have cooked. What happened to your owl? Huh? I gotta paint it permanently. You want the owl or you want the cat? Meow. Or do you want who do who? Folks, underneath the mango tree. Look, baby. Now we got the clothes basket and the clothes hangers in the mango tree, baby. Mango, what's mango? The guava tree. I'm sorry. You are disrespecting the guava tree. You can't do that, baby. All right, folks, let me get this little paintbrush over here. Get a little Ace Ace Hardware. Nah, I don't know where we bought this. I think it's a Divi Mart paintbrush. Paint that big hunk of meat. And she tells me, don't burn that piece of meat. I ain't never burned. I ain't never burned a piece of meat in my life. That is going to be the sizzle zizzle over there. Folks, drinking a cold thing, huh? Straight out of Thailand. I cannot wait to get back to Thailand, folks. I'm living a dream here, but I love Thailand. I'm ready to go. You ready to go to Thailand, baby? Yeah. She's over here yakking me about not burning her piece of meat. But what I figured out, this is not meat. This is a bone. And I said, baby, why, why are you yakking me about not burning your bone? And she said... I said, oh, you know, why, why'd you buy this bone? She said, because, tell them why, baby. It's, it's, it's nice to eat. It's challenging. So it's challenging to eat a bone? Huh? Yeah, but well, like, you're not bored, <laughs> So if you're bored, you want a bone to gnaw on. That's Folks, you see what, I'm, see what I'm working with here? I mean, I'm just getting yacked every minute about not burning the girl's bone. Honey, in America, we would make this for uh, for our St. Bernard's. Honey, there's not enough meat on there to make a sandwich. I get some. You eat that guava? Yeah. Show everybody close on the camera. What's the name of this guava here in the Philippines? Bayabas. Bayaba. Yeah, beside it. Bye, yeah, bye. I don't know what it's like. Bye, 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 b
I'm working on your bone, but I got, I got to be honest, it's hard cooking this big hunk of meat because it's like wrestling a big woman. You just got to keep getting a grip on it. It's just, I don't know, difficult. Honey, you beautiful, but why are you yakking me, baby? Listen, you told me not to burn your bone. I'm trying not to burn the bone. I'm sacrificing some of my beer to keep the fire down. Okay, what can I do? That water's not safe, baby. I'm using beer. This is this is okay. Honey, listen. I didn't mean to put the beer on your bone. I put the beer on the fire to keep the fire down because you said don't burn that bone. And let me re reiterate my argument, honey. I have never cooked a bone for anybody. But I love you so much that you bought this big ass bone that normally we would feed to a Rottweiler. I'm cooking it for you because I love you, baby. But don't bitch if I put beer on the fire to keep your bone from not burning. Folks, I've been using, I had to use two barbecue tools over here. This goddamn bone is so heavy. Mmm. I'm fucking with sugar now. Look at her. Look at her. Baby, has any man ever cooked you a bone that size? I, 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 honey, I think this is a Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, calf muscle or something. What? What? Stand up. Stand up. Done. Stand it up for what? Here, it was not cooked. Where is not cooked? Where? Show me where. Okay, all right. Hmm. Where at? Yeah, hold it. Okay, hold let, me, let me burn myself. Alright, okay, I can't hold it, baby. Listen. Listen. Oh, it's Nobody's gonna suffer any burns over a bone. That bone is not gonna stand straight up. Okay? Like, some, like it's not gonna stand straight up. <laughs> Alright? I don't know how to get it. Give me a piece of string. I'll hang, I'll hang it up from the clothesline. But listen, just please don't yank me, baby. I'm doing the best I can cooking your bone. It's not what? Where? 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 On the ends? All right, I'm going to stab it with the pig sticker. If there's enough meat in the bone to get a grip. And there's really not. It's nothing but bone, folks. I don't know what the hell she wants. What do you want me to do? Hold it like this? You want me to hold it like this? But you keep telling me not to burn it. I can't hold a camera, a pig sticker, a bone, and a and a bear can. You see the stress I'm under? You see the stress that I'm under here? I'm burn I'm, I'm gonna suffer third degree burns. Because this one right here is complaining about me not burning her bone. Now folks, that dog bone, that bone is done over there. I told her I said put it on something metal. If you put it on plastic, she's gonna melt it. It's gonna taste like plastic. Baby, how do you think I did with the dog bone? Huh? How you think I did? Be honest now. Is it is it good or burnt or what? I have never burned a piece of meat ever in the history of my barbecue days. I don't know why you say that. Look at that bone, Paness, slapping them on there. Shout out to Jimbo, damn it, man. Thanks to you. We're cooking on this tonight, my brother. We certainly appreciate it. Forrest G chilling over there. He's not even getting any water in the hot tub. He's just chilling in a dry hot tub. A little bit of sauce left for mine. This is mine right here. This is Forrest G's. And my Filipino wife is going after that dog bone. Baby, is there a reason that you decided to go with the dog bone tonight? So you said pork ribs, and he gave you that dog bone? Yeah, sometimes it happens. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Folks, I got to go. I got to get the, the paintbrush, paint this up. Look at that. That's a, that's a sign of a true barbecue man right there. Not afraid. Get those. You're not the one who washed it off. Not afraid to wipe off his barbecue tools on a white pair of shorts. 
Baby, I don't care. You know what? That's what's important is that barbecue. I finished this dog bone. Then she complained it wasn't done. Now I'll put it back on here. Now she's complaining I burned the dog bones. Ain't nothing wrong with my chops over there. Ain't nothing wrong with this dog bone. But when you get a big ass hunk of meat, it's not going to cook efficiently. You got that big ass bone in there you got to heat up. I mean, she's complaining, but it ain't my fault. If you scrape... No, it's not finished, baby, because that meat... It... It's not burn. I ain't never burned a piece of meat in my life. I ain't never. It ain't never happened to me on my my culinary cooking here. Look at that. I don't think it's finished, baby. I think it needs five more minutes. Well, last time you said it was finished, and then you complained that it wasn't finished. So I'm gonna put five more minutes, and you won't be complaining, baby. Folks, you see the stress I'm under? How many husbands would cook a dog bone for their wife? and then listen to their complaining about the dog bone cooking operation. I don't know how many people would listen to that. But you know, I'm here, I'm dealing with the stress of, of cooking a damn piece of Tyrannosaurus Rex. I think that might be done. I'll put them over there in the hopper. Folks, barbecue operations are over. Okay, I got three excellent pieces of pork steak. Filipino wife number one has got a uh, dog bone ready to go. She claims I cooked it too much. I ain't worried about it in here. Oh Shit I got some noodles going on them noodles on there I'm over here folks. I can drink this beer all day long. I don't feel any effects of this beer What you got to do if you're drinking this piss water is hit a shot of a uh, fireball every time you drink a beer hit a shot of fireball and then you might feel some effects. I did good on my charcoal management. I still have two bags left over and some down here in the chute. And that's just gonna be perfect for my noodles and it'll be time to eat. <clears throat> <clears throat> Shit, life is good. Folks, just a little simple thing like barbecuing in the backyard over charcoal. Mm. Underneath the guava tree. And Fadima stole another guava off the guava tree. So I think I only got two left. I'm trying to explain to her, look, if you take all the guavas, I can't enjoy the view and know that it's a guava tree. They don't give a damn. They don't care. Now, folks, I don't know if this is going to be one huge marathon video of my walking tour on the beach today uh, or if I just make a walking tour video and then a uh, you know Filipino wife wants me to cook her a dog bone video I don't know what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna tell you something that happened on my way home now I was not drunk it's just okay I bought that new iRig lavalier mic now I have one I've used it for a couple years and the thing broke uh, the little clip breaks real easy So I bought a new one Okay, now I got two so I can wire myself up and you know whoever I'm talking to I can put one on On the way home. I lost slash broke Slash casualty of war the clip and Oh and the uh, the foam You know the dead cat that takes down the wind noise fuck because the microphone that, I, that I've that i had for years, the clip is broke, I lost the wind muff, and now I have a brand new iRig microphone with no clip, no wind muff. I got bad luck. So I said, you know what, maybe it's a sign just to take it more simplicity. Screw that lavalier mic. I'll just go with the little microphone here on the iPhone 12 mini. And it, it's going to have to perform. That's just the way it is. I mean, like I said, I wasn't drunk. I didn't do it on purpose. Uh, you know, I got that charcoal. And next thing you know, the damn thing dropped. And I could not find it. <laughs> and only thing I can think is that those little holes that go down to the sewer, that damn thing stumbled right into one of those holes in the sewer. So I got two microphones that work, but just no way to efficiently mount them. And no uh, foam wind muff. Shit happens.
Only thing to do in a time like this. Mmm. Looks that fireball is so delicious. You can drink. You really can't drink that shit straight. You don't need to put a mixer or anything. Before I forget, in my slightly inebriated state here, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Eugene in Montana. Shout out to you, my brother. Uh, you're a friend of Annika's. She was talking about you. I said, hey, is it okay to give him a shout out? She said, yeah. So shout out to Eugene, man, over in Montana. Uh, come on over, man. Come on over. Whatever you get the, get the chance when they open the airport back up. And we'll have some beers, my friend. So shout out to you. Hope you're doing well and stay safe in your profession. I'm not going to give any more personal identifying information. But uh, just to say, you know, watch your six. Do what you got to do, my friend. And I was in Montana back in June, July, sometime in there. Man, I love Montana. Montana is one of the most beautiful places on the on the planet. I would rank Montana up there with Afghanistan and Vietnam. Like three, three if I had the three most beautiful like areas due to landscape, uh, that would be my top three: Montana, Afghanistan, and Vietnam. My goodness. So shout out to you, my friend. Shout out to Annika and Dada. Uh, nice running into you ladies today. Great conversation. And folks, one more thing, housekeeping. If you're not a subscriber on my channel, a bottom right hand corner of your screen, what I want you to do is hit that overstay road sign. And I want you to smash that bell. Who that ringing that bell? This is me. Yo, Adrian. It's Rocky. Just ring the fucking bell. <laughs> You'll get notified when I post videos because there's no production schedule. Sometimes I post one a day. Sometimes I post one a week. Sometimes I'll dump three. If you don't ring in that bell, you're not going to know. You'll be left out of this train. Mmm, that is delicious. But folks, I'm just chilling here. Our meal is almost ready. I'm hanging out with wife number one and my fourth G. And we're gonna watch a movie tonight. We're just gonna watch a movie on uh, on our setup. Shout out to Eric, man. Thanks for hooking us up on our movie setup. That's all I'm gonna say about that. We're gonna watch a movie and just enjoy the evening as a family. A little quiet evening here. I'll see you guys on the next one, my friend. I hope you're having a beautiful, wonderful day. Wherever you are on this beautiful planet that we call the Earth. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Alright, folks. Forrest G said that my barbecue is Forrest G approved. Alright, folks. Here's a beautiful... Filipino wife and her dog bone. Baby, just grab it with two hands and bite down on it like a dog on a bone, like a croc, like a mother crocodile. Come on, let's do it, alligator. Get it, baby, get it. Get it like a jaguar, like a tiger, like a lion. Get it, baby, big bite. Oh, that was, that was a small bite. That was like a rat. Please don't ask me to cook a dog bone ever again. That shit took like eight hours to cook that damn dog bone. Is that a fork or a neck smell like beef? Uh, no, it's a uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay? Tyrannosaurus is what it is. It's a rare breed of uh, Carabao native to Borneo. It's important. Is it good or no?